Okay, we'll start the program. Yes, sir, it's visible perfectly. Am I visible? Am I audible? Yes, sir, perfectly. Okay, fine, great, thank you. Okay, this is an extra just peer view of a 64 year old female. Volunteers to describe and come to the diagnosis. Slightly over penetrated and slightly off center does not matter. Any volunteers? Nikhil, would you like to try? Nikhil Patel? Gaurav, would you like to try? To describe it, then uh, automatically the diagnosis will come. Anybody else? Saroj, would you like to try? Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Sir, X-ray chest, PA view. Hmm. Sir, uh, showing situs solitus. Hmm. Sir, uh, you told uh, over penetrated. Yes, sir. We can see the spine. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. Uh, now, sir, uh, uh, regarding cardiomegaly, Mm. Sir, it is either borderline or normal. Oh, um, probably uh, see. It is normal, sir. Oh, maybe I would consider that maybe sir, mild cardiomegaly. Yes, mild. mild. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Right. And sir, uh, apex, sir. Uh, sir, LV type. No, I don't think you should comment on that. Uh, it's an osteoarthritic yes, character because if it is a dipping below the diaphragm, you can say definitely LV type. Yes, sir. If it is <clears throat> up ten, you can say it is an RV type. Yes, Here, sir. Borderline, so I would say pass it off as that. No yes, special sir. comments about the whether LV type or RV type of effects. <clears throat> yes, sir. Okay. Uh, sir, there is a difference in the uh, uh, both sides of the lungs are like. Uh, uh, Emphysematous little changes are seen on the left uh, um, thorax, epi, uh, upper part, sir. They, they are little more uh, like. No, sir, uh, are reading, uh, reading an X-ray chest, mainly meant for okay, sir. <coughs> yes, evaluation of the cardiovascular system. Yes, then sir. you should start with the heart. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, uh, <coughs> sir, among the this one, sir, uh, borders, uh, sir, calcification, multiple calcifications are seen. Mm. Sir, uh, Where is the calcification? Sir, hyalur region. Sir, uh, whether they are uh, like a hemosiderosis or calcification, sir, we have to mm, see, sir. Uh, sir, multiple end on views uh, on the both the. Uh, no, I think when you describe an X-ray chest, <clears throat> after having made a comment about the cardiac enlargement. <clears throat> You should describe the left border of the heart, which is okay, very sir. Uh, okay, sir. Left border of the heart, uh, sir. Uh, I will go from the sir uh, our thick knuckle. Sir, there is oh. some calcification seen. Bit of a calcification, okay, right? Yes, sir. Not very much prominent, yes, but it is sir. there, okay. Sir, uh, pulmonary artery prominent. Hmm. Pulmonary artery segment is very prominent. You can see yes, very. Sir. Very significantly dilated pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery, yes. Okay, right, yes. Yes, sir. Uh, and now, sir, the uh, rest of the left border is looking normal. Okay, what is the next border? That, that is the next structure. Sir, left atrial appendix. Left atrial appendix. So, there is no prominence of the left atrial appendix. Very good. And the LV border also normal, sir. Okay. Now, come to the, sir, right border. Uh, mm -hmm. Sir, uh, RA, uh, uh, sir, uh, RA, 
uh, it is either normal or little prominent so it is <laughs> see there is a limitation in interpreting the right atrial border yes, because so it is slightly rotated William. yes sir. but uh, looking at the x-ray it seems that r is not enlarged because not you not enlarged yes sir and so now i can see the unfolding of the arch uh, sir on the right border sir uh, arch of aorta is c uh, 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 it is not as we see sir it is uh, aorta, uh, uh, aorta uh, unfolding should i say sir I don't think right I, I, I cannot very prominently see aorta. See aorta is going okay, like sir. this. Okay, sir. Okay, I will sir. not comment about the right pulmonary aorta. artery is very prominent. Yes. And sir, it is dilated also. Okay. Uh, and um, so, sir, uh, uh, from the left side, sir, there is a main pulmonary artery dilatation. Left pulmonary artery we cannot see so well, but still. No, no. See what is this? Sir, uh, this also lift left pulmonary artery only, sir. Yeah. See, what are your yeah. senses? Because this being a slightly or penetrated view, you can clearly see the left pulmonary artery. Yes, sir. So, yeah. sir, MPA, RPA, LPA, all three, all, uh, they are dilated. So, okay. so uh, with uh, uh, some, some end on end on view uh, of the um, vessels. End on muscles. End on muscles. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. How many, how many are there? Uh, one, two, three. This one here. Five, four, five, sir. Here. Yeah. Another here. Uh, then uh, here also vessels are very prominent. You can see the some vessels, uh, end on vessels through the uh, lung shadow. So altogether about five or six can be easily seen. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So what is the criteria for uh, pulmonary plethora when you look at the end on vessels? Sir, one side uh, uh, more than three and both sides more than five. Yeah. If it is more than three on one side and more than five, both sides put together, okay. that will qualify for increased pulmonary vascularity. Uh, vascularity. So you are seeing multiple endoscopic cells that indicate increased pulmonary vascularity. Okay, right. And on if the periphery, like, sir, there is a pruning scene. Yes, there is a peripheral pruning of the, uh, the. There is a. This is not a centralization. Yes, now, yes. you see the prominent vessels in the central part of the lung, that is the hilum, and as you go to the periphery, the vessels are. Less prominent and is cut off. This is the feature of. So this is a isomerization. Yeah, that's a feature of pulmonary arterial hypertension. Hypertension and also there is evidence of left to right shown. So yes, sir. Uh, so this must be a the PDS condition, condition which has uh, subsequently developed into pulmonary arterial hypertension and isomerization reaction. Yes, Whenever you see in a 64-year-old female, such a large number of endon vessels with the prominent pulmonary artery segment and all. What should be your possible diagnosis? Sir, first I should think about ASD. Yeah, I think ASD should be the correct diagnosis because ASD is the one which can give rise to multiple endon vessels. Whenever you are seeing multiple endon vessels, because the ASD shunt is much more than PD or VS shunt. So whenever you see multiple endon vessels and there is a a prominent pulmonary artery segment, and also if there is associated cardiomegaly, also those are all features. And if you can easily recognize right atrial enlargement, then it's almost 100 percent certain that you are dealing with a patient with the atrial septal defect. So, this was actually a case of atrial septal defect. Very good, yes. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. There is higher calcification also, sir. I think I could not see where they, where are they finding higher calcification? Right side, yes. Uh, that above it, above the calcified node is there just above it. I'm not certain. I don't think there's any uh, definitely calcified node. If there is a calcified node, then you have to think of other possibilities, including tuberculosis, sarcoidosis, all those things. But I am not able to make out any specific uh, calcified node. Now, uh, you can see plenty of endron vessels. One is here, one is here. Everywhere there are plenty of endron vessels. You can see plenty of endron vessels. The pulmonary artery segment is very prominent. Left, left, left pulmonary artery is very, very prominently seen. Right pulmonary artery is very prominently, prominently seen. And there is a peripheral cutoff. All those indicate that there is evidence of increased pulmonary vascularity as well as increased pressure in the pulmonary artery. So that qualifies for Eisenmenger syndrome. And whenever there are multiple endon vessels seen of this nature with large pulmonary artery uh, pulmonary vessels, I think you should always entertain a possibility of atrial septal defect. So this was this turned out to be a case of atrial septal defect. Okay, Gaurav, why can't you try this? 
anybody can try see all of you all of you should must try is hey not there yes yes sir yes, oh, sir why can't you try uh, it? yes sir good evening sir good evening uh, uh it's chest x ray uh, chest x ray uh, P, uh, pa view okay uh, then uh, on le left side uh, if you see uh, the the pulmonary bay area is uh, no, no 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 first you start with cardiomegaly that's the way to do it yes sir uh, significant cardiomegaly is there sir yes there is a cardiac enlargement uh, very good is there but you must always uh, say that when you are not measured you should say that on visual assessment there is cardiac enlargement because you are looking at it and then you have assessed that there is a cardiac enlargement so better say that on visual assessment there is cardiac enlargement okay right yes then uh, uh, apex is mostly uh, looking gelv type of apex sir no i won't comment about see uh, uh, okay. make it very clear that when you want to comment about the type of apex if it bends down like this goes okay. down and comes up then it is lv type no doubt about it. and when it when it, this is lifted up and there is a acute angle between the cardiac cellet and the diaphragm then you can say that it is an rv type okay the other two Uh, you just say that apex is normal, and if the examiner insists on making a comment, then you can make a comment. Okay. Okay. Right. Yes. Uh, pulmonary bay area is uh, enlarged. So, uh, so what is so, this? Aortic. Uh, uh, yeah. Aortic. Aortic knuckles. Why is it uh, dilated? Normal? What do you think? Uh, normal, sir. It's a normal looking normal. Sir. Normal. It's normal. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Yes, and uh, then pulmonary uh, main pulmonary artery enlarged, pulmonary bay area is enlarged. Pulmonary artery segment is dilated. What are yes, the dilated. what are the conditions you should suspect when you find that pulmonary artery segment is dilated? Yeah, uh, when, uh, first is the pulmonary hypertension. We can pulmonary artery in this pressure. Okay, right. Two. Yes. Uh, then uh, uh, yeah, if there connection between the uh, aorta and the uh, pulmonary artery, uh, patent to artery artery No, no, uh, increase flow. Uh, Um, there are many questions uh, can give us things for like uh, is the anomalous pulmonary venous drainage uh, then um, uh, then uh, um, uh, VSD PDA so uh, increase flow increase pressure increase flow uh, then what else the pulmonary stenosis yes post aortic dilatation very post aortic dilatation yes yes what else anything else idiopathic dilatation of pulmonary artery so whenever you see a pulmonary artery segment is prominent you should immediately fix it whether it is due to increased flow increased pressure post aortic dilatation or idiopathic dilatation of the pulmonary artery so but this is in your mind so you should look for evidence to diagnose whether it is increased flow or increased pressure or a both combination what is happening really happening okay right yes go ahead uh, then on right side sir uh... Uh, then uh, right uh, descending pulmonary artery uh, seems to be dilated. Very good. Before that, you uh, should finish off the cardiac cellet. Right side is there a right yes, artery? Yes, uh, sir. Uh, right artery enlargement is there. So yes. What is the criteria than, for right artery enlargement? Uh, more, more than three intercostal spaces. Yes. Ah, no, no, no. Not more than three intercostal spaces. Sir, if we if we draw a line from the uh, this one uh, right border. So the um, uh, RA uh, RA will take more than fifty percent half. So uh, from where the aortic knuckle is taking turn, so mm -hmm. on the right border to the diaphragm, the RA will be longitudinally more than fifty uh, percent. And sir, so horizontally, sir, so it will uh, cross more than sir so if it is two point five centimeter beyond the uh, right uh, uh, border of the spine. So. Or sir, two and a half intercostal spaces. No, oh, yeah. I think there are the three simple criteria. One, vertical height. If it is more than two and a half intercostal spaces, or more than three, three or more, covering more than three or more vertebrae. If it is more than three vertebrae, as you can count here. So it starts from here. One, two, three. Easily three. Intercostal space one, two, two and a half. Very easily. So there is a evidence of right atrial enlargement. Another criteria that you can apply is that from the central point, you measure to the farthest point on the right side. If that uh, distance is more than one third of the right hemithorax, you measure the distance to the right hemithorax from here to here. And if this uh, distance from the central point to the uh, right border of the heart is more than one third of the right hemithorax, that also is a point in favor of right atrial enlargement. So that's right atrial enlargement. Okay, right. Yes. Any evidence of left atrial enlargement? 
सर एक्चुअली द लेफ्ट पॉट लुकिंग स्ट्रेट सर आफ्टर पलमोनरी मीन्स आफ्टर पलमोनरी बे एरिया So, I don't think it is straight. I think it is coming down, and then uh, see you are not able to see distinctly see the left chair appendage. You should be able to see see here. There is actually it has come down, and then it is going straight. So okay. you are not able to see any prominence. Okay. Actually, uh, right, left order is straightened, and all is not correct according to me. You should describe what you are seeing. Is I want to prominent? Is the left side prominent? Is the segment prominent? Is the left side appendage prominent? Is the RV outflow tract prominent? So you should describe it, and then you interpret it. Okay. You, you, what are the evidence? X-ray evidence of so left side renal enlargement. Uh, the left atrial border. There is straightening of the left atrial border. Uh, left appendage. Then... Better to use the word left side appendage prominence. Yes. Yes. Hmm. Mm. straightening is a visual impression and sometimes uh, straightening can occur due to other reasons also but when you are seeing a left atrial appendage is prominent then you are sure that left atrium is enlarged okay yes what else what are the x ray x ray chest pv evidence of left atrial enlargement So double contour of the right border. Double, double density sign. It is a LA enlargement. Yes, shadow through shadow. You are seeing ah, yes. uh, double density. Double density. Increase uh, double density. Shadow through shadow is another evidence of left atrial enlargement. Okay, third. Widening of the renal. Uh, sir, widening, widening of, of the, uh, the left. The left uh, bronchus is lifted up. Uh, uh, the lifted up. Widening of the carinal angle. Okay. Yes, very good. Fourth point. So on the lateral X-ray, we can see indentation of the uh, isof indentation. We can uh, lateral X-ray. What indentation? What indentation? Lateral X-ray. How will you diagnose uh, lateral X-ray? So then we have to do the uh, barium swallow. Then only. Sir. No, no, no. I am no. just saying, barium solo. Of course, agreed. Uh, in barium solo, what is the good view? The lateral view. No, right hand, right hand probably. Okay. Right hand probably gives the best view to assess the uh, esophageal uh, indentation of the left atrium. Left atrium can cause an indentation of the esophagus, and that is the uh, uh, best seen in right hand probably view. So barium solo in right hand probably view. Second is that in a lateral view, usually The cardiac shadow does not the 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 left atrium may touch the spine, but will not overlap the spine. If in a lateral view, if the left atrial shadow overlaps the spine, that is an evidence of left atrial enlargement. I will repeat: in a lateral view, usually the the left atrium does not overlap the spine. If in a lateral view, the left atrial shadow overlaps the spine, uh, that is suggestive of left atrial enlargement. Where will be the left atrial shadow in a lateral view? How will you make out? Where is the left atrial shadow? Hang on. Yes, sir. How will you make out whether which is the left atrium in a lateral view? Any one of you? You have to in a lateral view. You have to draw a line from the lowermost part of the cardiac cilia, which touches the spine, touch, touches the sternum. From that point, you draw a line to the hilum of the lung. Hilum of the lung. Yes. Then, then after that. Sir, it will be sir uh, uh, below and behind uh, posterior. Now you have to describe it. Where are the chambers? Then when you draw a line in a, from the uh, from the uh, sternum, lower part of the sternum to the hilum, that divides the heart into two. The one anterior portion is the right sided chambers, and the posterior portion are the left sided chambers. 
then the each upper half and lower half can be divided into two. And when it is divided into two, the upper portion is the atria and the lower portion is the ventricle. So I'll repeat once more, because usually, usually uh, students don't look at the lateral view x-ray. When you take a lateral view of the x-ray, the cardiac cilia is divided into uh, four chambers by, by the, the following technique. You would draw a line from the lower part of the cardiophrenic, cardiophrenic uh, sternal junction to the, the hilum of the lung, which divides the heart into two, upper portion and lower portion. Upper portion is the right side chambers, lower portion is the left side chambers. Then these two uh, halves are divided again into two halves. The upper portion is the uh, atria and the lower portion is the ventricle. So the, if you divide the heart into four chambers, the right upper quadrant will be the left atrium, posterior. Posterior upper quadrant will be the uh, left atrium, posterior lower quadrant will be the left ventricle, anterior lower quadrant will be the right ventricle, and the anterior upper quadrant will be the right atrium. So you can look at the lateral view. But the lateral view is best, uh, you know, uh, what is the uh, advantage of a lateral view? Which is the best structure which can be best assessed by lateral view? Right ventricle. Right ventricle. Right ventricle can be evaluated. You can also evaluate uh, aortic calcification, aortic valve calcification. Uh, the aortic, aortic valve usually overlaps the spine in a PA view. And because of that, the uh, the uh, aortic calcification is not very clearly made out in a PA view. But if you, uh, when you do a lateral view, the aortic calcification is seen at the center of the cardiac cilia, and it can be very clearly made out. So if you want to make out the aortic calcification very well, then it is better to take a lateral view. And that will give you a clear picture of the aortic calcification, aortic valve calcification. So here, the, uh, we have found that right atrium is enlarged. We also found promatosopin is prominent. Uh, there's a cardiomegaly. Uh, there are no left atrial enlargement. Okay, then what else? Ignore. Uh, so peripheral uh, uh, pruning is there, sir. The output, you can still see vessels going outside. I will not fully agree with the pruning because uh, I can definitely see vessels which are reaching the periphery. So you have to differentiate whether <clears throat> is there a pulmonary artery hypertension, very doubtful, so about pulmonary artery hypertension. Do you think that there is increase in the pulmonary vascularity? Uh, yes, it's looking increase to increase. Uh... Uh, what are the features which help you to diagnose increased pulmonary vascularity? Just now only you mentioned. Uh, sir, at... end on end on vessels. Sir, that end is one criteria. And what else? Yes. More and more vessels are reaching the periphery. If the vessels are reaching the periphery, normally uh, vessels are usually traceable only up to the middle one third uh, lung field and reaching the periphery lateral one third only very few vessels reach but when if you find that plenty of vessels are reaching the lateral one third of the lung field that is an uh, that is another evidence for increased pulmonary vascularity and not vessels can be are there endron vessels in this patient uh is it there, sir? Actually, I think this is a definitely an endron vessel. You can see that. Yes, here, sir. And uh, one, two, uh, uh, one or two, uh, maybe three here. Three, one three, or two three. here. Uh, Miss, more than five uh, is there, sir. Uh, I think about uh, five or six endron vessels. Five, uh, yes. So uh, there is evidence of increased pulmonary vascularity. And what what may be the lesion? Uh, it could be uh, uh, ASD, sir. ASD. Why should you, yeah. why did you say it could be? Whenever you find that in a, in a shunt lesion, you are finding right atrium is enlarged, I think you should definitely go for ASD. ASD. And when there is an enlargement of the aorta, you should go for? PDA, sir. PDA. And when both are not there, you go for BSD. So that okay. can be a, a general uh, uh, way of looking at the X-ray chest and interpreting what may be the site of the lesion, site of the shunt. If it is ASD, right atrium will be enlarged. If there is a PDA, then the IOTA will be enlarged. In a patient with VST, both will not be there. 
Of course, this all depends upon the uh, the, the, uh, the size of the shunt. If the shunt is uh, the lesion is very small, then there may not be any effect on the cardiac cellular at all. The cardiac enlargement may not be there. Formal artery segment may not be prominent. So you will find all these findings when there is significant shunt. When there is a significant shunt, right atrium goes for ASD, aorta goes for PDA, and absence of both will go for VST. Okay, right. We'll go to the next one. Tigers. This is x ray of a, I think it's about 10 year old boy. What is the most important thing we struck you? So it's extra it's chest a AP view, sir. And sir, the apex is upturned. Yeah, that's the most important. And, Very and easily, so that's the one which strikes because there's a apex is upturned and it goes and joins the diaphragm at an acute angle. So RV type of apex. Sir. So, so this is a, this is you can definitely make a comment that this is an RV type of apex where apex is turned up. It is away from the diaphragm. And then you can see that the, 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 the angle between the uh, cardiac cilet and the diaphragm, cardiac phrenic angle is, a, is an acute angle. So that is an additional point for you to suspect that this could be an RV, uh, RV apex. Okay, right. Yes. So that figure of eight looks like, sir, that aorta is so prominent, sir, on the right side. Aorta is slightly prominent on the right side. I agree with you that in a figure of eight, this aorta very prominent. What are the structures which uh, contribute to the uh, figure of eight appearance? <coughs> So what are the yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, figure of eight appearance. Sir, I don't know, sir. Anybody who would like to give a comment? What are the structures which go, uh, go to give the figure of eight appearance in a patient with total anomalous pulmonary vein drainage? It's actually found by the common vertical. Yes, Common vertical vein, which is formed by the fusion of all the pulmonary veins, which goes upwards, and then it may join the uh, the uh, the left denominate vein, and that that get dilated the left denominate vein, and the left denominate vein comes and joins the superior vein and further dilates. So the structures which actually form, go to form the upper part of the eighth are the vertical vein, the denominate vein, and the uh, the uh, superior vena cava. Which all gets dilated. Sometimes the uh, vertical vein may not reach, the, may not join the innominate vein. It may go along the side of the innominate vein and joins the superior vena cava at the innominate left innominate superior vena cava junction. In that case, the of the you know, the upper part of the figure of eight is formed by the common pulmonary vein. So the structures which form the upper part of the figure of eight are one vertical vein, which is the common pulmonary vein, then the, either the left denominate vein or the, the horizontal part of the left common, the horizontal part of the common pulmonary vein, then the superior vena cava, which actually receives the whole pulmonary venous drainage, and that gets significantly dilated. So that forms the, the eight part of the upper part of the eight. Okay, right, yes. But I don't think this figure of eight because there is no vessels are banned in a patient with a, uh, a, a, a total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage. You should be able to see very prominent vascularity. So there will be a, a, a more of left to right shunt, and the, there will be endron vessels. The pulmonary vascularity will be significantly increased. Here, yeah, the aorta is prominent. I agree. So aorta is prominent. Then there is a. Uh, the, the RV type of apex, apex is lifted up. RV type of apex. What about the pulmonary vascularity? And what about the, the less, sir. Off, sir. It is less, and also you can see that the pulmonary oh. bay. Actually, it is bay. a bay. Yeah. Yeah. The pulmonary uh, artery segment actually it is a bay. So, in a patient with the tetralogy of pilo, you can see the obtained apex, pulmonary bay. Uh, permanent vascularity is significantly reduced and sometimes aorta can be formed. 
So all put together, let me be more in favor of a patient with tetralogy of pen. I mean, when you are suspecting a cyanotic congenital heart disease, you should you should always look at the situs. Here the liver is on the right side, and you can see the gas shadow. So the stomach is on the left side. This is the X-ray of a four-day-old baby. Sir, X-ray chest AP view. Hmm. Sir, there is a cardiomegaly. And hmm. sir, pulmonary plethora is present. Is Very it a TAPV, sir? Uh, four days old, na no, sir. Hmm. Sir, um, increased uh, vascularity of the lung in a four-day-old baby. Yes, sir. What about the what is your comment about the uh, pedicle? Pedicle is narrow. Narrow and uh, uh, PG usually. Usually, uh, these patients will have the the superior mediastinum will be filled with what structure? The thymus. 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 Disappearance of the thymus usually indicates a major form of cardiovascular, cardiovascular disease. Yeah. And the common condition that you should always suspect is transposition of yeah. great arteries. Yeah. And also, if you want to give a shape to it, you can think that this is something like a a gone side appearance. This is the uh, upper the the bigger part of the egg and this is the smaller part of the egg and this is a egg on side appearance egg on side appearance narrow pedicle uh, very uh, the pulmonary plethora and uh, absence of thymus are all features suggestive of transposition of great arteries always uh, whenever the thymus is absent you must carefully look for uh, evidence to diagnose any major cardiovascular disease and transfusion of great arteries is one condition where the thymus can disappear in the first week of life itself and uh, that will help you to make a diagnosis of transposition of great arteries. So he, this is a case of transposition of great arteries. You can also have a look at the egg on side appearance where this is the, uh, the broader part of the egg and this is the narrower part of the egg. And uh, in this pulmonary vascularity. Okay, right. Yes. Uh, sir, is there any specific uh, criteria for uh, uh, pedicle when it called to be uh, dilated or narrow? I don't read anywhere, but if the pedicle is not extending beyond the spine, usually pedicle is in, inside the spine, there is evidence that this is a narrow pedicle. Okay, sir. Then next we compare the pedicle with the size of the heart also. When the heart size and the pedicle does not, for example, another condition where you can have an narrow pedicle is uh, Epstein's anomaly. The heart is big and you get another condition where you can get narrow pedicle is in patients with mitral regurgitation. Sometimes heart may be big and then you can find that the pedicle is very narrow. So, in medical parallels, uh, one method that you can evaluate is whether it is inside the vertebral column. If it is inside the vertebral column, that's a point in favor that the pedicle is narrow. Why the pedicle is narrow in PGA? Anteroposterior relation. Of yes, the, the great vessels have got an anteroposterior relationship, and because of that, the is, pedicle is extremely narrow in a patient with transposition of great arteries. Very good. Yes. Okay. Exercise just PA view. So, calcification is seen near the apex. Yes. On the left border, sir. Yes. So, what are the structures which can get calcified of this nature? So one is aneurysmal dilatation of the LV apex. Very good. Post-operative patient, post-infarction patient who has got a, uh, uh, aneurysm, fibrosis, can get calcified, and that can be one of the uh, 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 one of the uh, differential diagnoses. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Do you think that's a pericardial calcification? No, sir. No pericardial calcification because sir, there is a space between the. Uh, right, left, still and the calcification. Yeah, you can't be 100% certain, but I fully agree with you that uh, sometimes this, uh, the pericardial calcification can uh, fool you because sometimes it may 
it may appear as though it is inside the cardiac cilia and still can be pericardial calcification. But I fully agree with you that looking at the shadow and the nature of the calcification is unlikely to be pericardial calcification. Okay, very good. So this is a myocardial calcification and following a, a myocardial infarction where there was fibrosis aneurysm and uh, fibrosis and aneurysmal segment got calcified. Very good, excellent. Okay, any takers? It's back swing appearance of the pulmonary edema. Okay, the patient is in acute pulmonary edema. Due to what? Narrow, narrow, so cardiomegaly is not there. So oh. possibly so what are the what are the conditions in which without cardiac enlargement patient can go for pulmonary edema? Hydrostenosis. Hydrostenosis. Tell four or five conditions. Yes, yes. No cardiomegaly, uh, patient in acute pulmonary edema. Good mitral regurgitation, sir. Acute mitral regurgitation. You should say acute mitral regurgitation. Very good. Acute aortic regurgitation, acute valvular regurgitation, acute aortic and mitral regurgitation, both especially in a patient with infective endocarditis. Where only Sir, hypertensive yeah. heart failure. Very good, hypertensive heart failure. Very good. Sir, renal flush pulmonary edema. Yes, we are, uh, 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 ischemia. Ischemia can give rise to acute pulmonary edema. Ischemia sometimes heart can be normal. Patient can uh, develop acute pulmonary edema. Renal acute uh, renal flash edema, flash pulmonary edema can occur. So these are the, some conditions in which the heart can be normal in size and the patient can develop acute pulmonary edema. What all may be the cause in this patient? There's some valve valve that do. Very good. So there That's is a some calcification. Uh, valve is seen, sir. Yeah, you can see a valve. See, this is a valve. So what may be the mechanism of pulmonary edema in this patient? What is the reason? The valve thrombosis. Yes, there's most likely it must be well thrombosis resulting in stuck well giving rise to uh, giving rise to acute pulmonary edema. Okay, what is the treatment? Yes. Sir, uh, 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 because it is left sided and sir, the surgery is the treatment of choice, but uh, uh, sir, we can go for thrombolysis also. And the surgery is the treatment of choice. But uh, thrombolysis is a poor poor choice because what is the problem of thrombolysis? Thrombolysis. thrombolysis. Because they usually these patients have got large chunk of uh, thrombus, and when you uh, when you do a thrombolysis, some of these thrombus can get dislodged, can get lysed, and some of the thrombus can get dislodged. It may go to the uh, to the uh, to the brain, and the patient can result in a stroke, and uh, so. Uh, thrombolytic therapy, though it can, it is, it can sometimes it can save patients, but sometimes it may result in a stroke. So you should be very careful. If the surgeon is ready to take up the patient, uh, the, the re uh, valve replacement is the correct procedure. But the problem is that these patients are acutely sick, and uh, very few surgeons are willing to take up these patients because uh, they may not be able to lie down. So there will be all types of they are ex extremely sick. And so very often the uh, surgical replacement, surgical re-replacement is not usually the, uh, the procedure that we recommend, that we do. Most of the time these patients are the a eh? thrombolytic therapy. And uh, I have got two experiences in which thrombolytic therapy, uh, there are a few patients who, who recovered very well, but two, two experiences in which following thrombolytic therapy. Thrombolytic therapy is very successful. Patient symptoms came down, patient improved on the third day patient developed massive uh, embolic stroke and uh, we lost both the patients. Usually the stroke in these patients when there is a large thrombus going out of the uh, valve is usually a massive uh, infarction and that can result in even hemorrhagic infarction and these patients do extremely bad and many of them will, uh, most of them may die also. So you should, in these patients, even though thrombolytic therapy is an option, but the first option is valve replacement. Okay, very good. Okay, ECG.
Agnath, would you like to try? Anybody can try. Gaurav. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so it is sinusism with first degree hard block is there, sir. Very good. Uh, then uh, there is left axis deviation is there. Very good. Uh, then uh, left uh, anterior of uh, LAB is there, sir. Okay. Uh, in a precordial lead, uh, there is a QRB, uh, QRBBB. Uh, so there's an RBB pattern. RB pattern, but uh, there is sudden uh, transition means. Uh, okay, there is. Q waves are seen from U1 to V5. So that yes, indicates the patient had a. Anterior was a myself. Anterior myocardial infarction. So the full ECG diagnosis the patient has got a, a normal sinus rhythm, first degree heart block, uh, left energy hemi block, right bundle branch block, and uh, 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 evolved anterior myocardial infarction. Okay, right. Yes. So what did you, what does it qualify for? Trifascicular block. Trifascicular block. Uh, can you tell me a few uh, electrocardiographic features which will help you to diagnose trifascicular block? There are about ten or twelve. You can say about five or six. Alternating RBBB and LBBB, sir. Very good. Uh, then uh, RBBB with left axis deviation with uh, first degree heart block. Very good. Uh, then, uh, What else? Sir, complete, ten, uh, yeah, yes. Sir, complete left bundle yes. branch block with increased PR intervals. Sir. Okay. A left bundle branch block with first degree heart block. Okay. Left entry fascicular block with uh, plus uh, left posterior fascicular block plus uh, first degree AV block. Okay. Uh, alternating uh, alternating uh, uh, left anterior fascicular block, left posterior fascicular block with first degree heart block. You should say they are alternating because when there is a when you are seeing left uh, anterior fascicular block and left posterior fascicular block coexisting, then it becomes LBBB. So if you want to clarify, it, you should say alternating left anterior fascicular block, left posterior fascicular block with first degree heart block. Okay, right, yes. Whenever you use the uh, first, degree a, first degree AV block, you are looking for an indirect evidence. When there, why do you say that there is a trifascicular block when there is first degree heart block? So in this ECG? In any ECG, when you are saying that first degree heart block is a criteria for trifascicular block, what are you imagining or what are you detecting? You said the, the PR, PR interval is um, uh, increased. Look at this. the his bundle of his. Hmm? Said time taken hmm. from the. Uh, it's a, a note to our uh, even note. No, one of you, one of you. Uh, after one, one person, the other person go, okay, Sarvaj, what do you think? Then we'll ask. Other one is Agana, is it? Yes, sir. Okay, so after Saraj, you can give your opinion. Okay, right. Yes, Saraj. The PR interval means uh, so the um, time taken uh, hmm. from the uh, sinus node up to the bundle of his. Huh? PR interval. Yeah, sir, AV node. Uh, what do you mean by PR interval is the time taken from the impulse to sorry, sir. travel from? Sinus node to an AV node. And no, 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 sir. It is up to uh, more distally, sir. More distally means? I have forgotten, sir. Hang on. PR interval is the that is a very simple question. PR interval is the time. P means the, 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 the first depolarization after the impulses left the sinus node. 
and what is r r is the so up to ventricle it will be total time sir oh it is a ventricle yes, so sir. the pr interval is the time taken from the impulse to travel from sinusoidal node to the ventricle and it has thought it is thought that it has got two three intervals what are those three intervals sir one is a h then h v Uh, 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 and sir, last part is sir, in the uh, total sir only ventricular myocardium. No 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 no. no. no, no. Anybody? Sir, a uh, nodal, a uh, nodal to his, and uh, first one is a C node to a V node, sir. Oh, okay, S A not A V not. Yes, what yes. is the time? Time. Uh, 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 is the time, is the time, is time taken for the impulse to travel from upper part of the uh, atrium to the lower part of the atrium to the A V not. That is known as P A interval. P A. That's known as P A interval. And then there is the A H interval. That is the time taken from the impulse to travel across the A V not up to the bundle of his. That is known as A H interval. And then is the time taken for the impulse to travel from the bundle of his to reach the ventricle. It is known as the H V interval. So in a in a patient where there is a diaphragmatic block, when there is a first degree heart block, what are we presuming? This patient, for example, take this patient. This patient has evidence of right bundle branch block and evidence of left post first anterior ventricular block. Then why are you saying it's five ventricular block? Sir, because the sir total time has been increased. It means sir, the uh, proximal to this uh, bundle also uh, there is a uh, uh, delay. We are considering A H interval is prolonged, sir. A H interval is prolonged. Then there is there, there is no five ventricular block. A H interval. The P A P A also in prolonged, sir. Hmm. The, the interval. Whenever you are saying triphasicular block, you are saying that both the two fascicles you already know it is uh, involved, and the third fascicle also is deceased as evidenced by PR prolongation. You are saying that the impulse which is traveling through that uh, uh, third fascicle, which also is deceased, is delayed, and so the 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 prolongation will be in the HV interval from the bundle of his to reach the ventricle will be the delay. Uh, this HV interval will be prolonged. What is a normal H V interval? Fifty milliseconds, sir. Thirty to fifty milliseconds. Okay, thirty-five to fifty-five milliseconds. Thirty to fifty is all right. Thirty-five to fifty-five milliseconds is the H V interval, and if it is prolonged, it can result in P R prolongation. So, the P R prolongation is an indirect evidence that the third fascicle also is deceased. I am asking you. Can you uh, tell me few situations in the electrocardiogram where there is no presumption, but there is definite evidence in the electrocardiogram of that all the three vesicles are involved? One you have already mentioned, alternating right bundle branch block and left bundle branch block. Few others. There you don't uh, depend upon the PR block. PR is normal. Still there is triphasicular block. Condition. The, the RBB LFB plus uh... you are right, but you have to complete it. Yes, sir. Third is first degree, but uh, you are cold. No, no. First degree, you are there is a uh, yes, you are presuming something. The RBB, LFB, and uh, there is right axis, left axis. You are right. RBB with alternating left anterior vesicular block and left posterior vesicular block. Very good. Yes. yes. RBB with alternating left anterior vesicular block and left posterior vesicular block. Okay, right. So another. We also mentioned alternating RBBB, LBBB. Third. Move it step two. Move it step two, sir. Move it step two. 
move its type two block. It's also a triphasicular block. And in infraction type of complete hard block. That also is a triphasicular block. Uh, anything else you are, you are telling? So, uh, there are few conditions in which the, you are taking PR interval prolongation and presuming that the PR interval prolongation is because of the HP interval prolongation. That is a conduction from the bundle of waste to the ventricle is delayed. Here, the condition the uh, electrocardiographic uh, uh, surface electrocardiographic BJs are one RBBB with the left anterior vesicular block, two RBBB with left posterior vesicular block. Of course, PR is prolonged. Then also, uh, you can look at the uh, uh, le left bundle wise block with PR prolongation, then right bundle wise block with PR prolongation. Alternating uh, right bundle wise block, uh, alternating left anterior vesicular block, and left posterior vesicular block with first degree hard block. So these are the conditions in which you are depending upon the PR interval. But there are conditions in which you don't depend upon the PR interval. They are one, alternating RBVB with LBVB, RBVB alternating with left anterior vesicular block and left posterior vesicular block. Try, uh, the the, uh, the uh, Mobis type 2 block. Infraction type of complete heart block. So these are all the few conditions where uh, without depending upon the PR prolongation, you can diagnose type physical heart block. Okay, so this question, what is the problem of triphysical heart block? Why are you worried about uh, heart block? So it may, uh, it may go into complete heart block at any time. Because we know that all the three physicals are in trouble. Two physicals are already blocked. And third physical also is uh, uh, has got impaired function and that also can get blocked. If the patient gets a third physical also blocked, that will result in complete heart block and the patient can develop a stroke Adams episode. What are the uh, uh, why the why these patients with complete heart block going for stroke Adams? What is the basic mechanism? Why these patients become unconscious? They develop uh, seizures, convulsions, and they develop uh, all types of complications because of a reduced level of perfusion. I'm asking yes, you. Why? Because sir, the atria and the ventricle are con not contracting simultaneously. Okay, sir, they are uh, contracting, if they contract simultaneously, sometimes in uh, complete heart block, then, sir, uh, the cerebral perfusion uh, will be hampered. Both, sir. Uh, why? Uh, why, why, why sir, are you were see in a patient with uh, uh, complete heart block? What will be the uh, stroke volume? Is it normal or an increase? Sir, um, it will be increased, sir, oh. uh, uh, because, sir, uh, uh, the uh, ventricle is, uh, uh, sir, the, there, there is two to three times uh, atria contracting, whereas, mm. sir, ventricle is contracting once. Mm. So, so, sir, it will be more from the back uh, uh, venous uh, flow will because, be, sir, Because of the tempered. slow heart rate, because of the slow heart rate, the diastolic period gets prolonged. And there may be two or three uh, atrial contractions in one cycle itself. And, uh, and the atrial conducts can be emptied into the ventricle and the ventricular volume increases, resulting in higher stroke volume. Well, you have to tell me what is the mechanism, why they become unconscious and then develop convulsions. Anyone of you? There are four reasons. When there is a bradycardia, say, Extreme radicardia of 20 or 30. What is the arrhythmia which can be triggered? A VT. What type of VT? Slow. Anyone of you? What type of VT can be triggered? Polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. These patients are found to develop in a polymorphic ventricular type tachycardia of the torso type, and these patients can, uh, the, the sudden death may be due to polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, which can quickly degenerate into ventricular fibrillation. Okay, one other thing. But that's one mechanism. Second mechanism. In a infraction complete heart block, where is the focus? 
ventricle yeah, well lower focus is in the ventricle and ventricular focus is a very pure poor pacemaker very often it is an unstable focus and sometimes one ventricular focus may suddenly stop firing and new focus may not take over and during this period patient can be, become unconscious and may even throw a seizure so the lower focus uh, instability is the, the second mechanism third mechanism Third mechanism. Another mechanism is that uh, when these patients exercise, they may not be able to increase the cardiac output because the, their heart rate is fixed. The heart rate cannot go up. Uh, of course, the stroke volume can go up marginally, but overall there is a uh, inadequate increase in the cardiac output, and that can result in reduced survival perfusion, and the patient can become unconscious. Fourth mechanism. If the patient is settling between normal sinus rhythm and complete heart block, uh, when the patient in the normal sinus rhythm suddenly goes for complete heart block, the lower focus, which is in the ventricle, may not take over. The lower ventricular focus is always an unstable focus. So the the uh, the uh, the uh, 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 the lower focus may not take over, and during this delay, the patient can become unconscious and then throw a seizure. So there are four mechanisms for production of loss of consciousness and the development of uh, uh, even going for uh, seizure phenomenon, and they are. Mm -hmm. uh, Gaurav, can you repeat? What are the four mechanisms by which patients with complete heart block can develop stroke sudden? Ah yes, sir. Yes, sir. First, the first is that. Uh, 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 we uh, polymorphic uh, VT, sir, polymorphic VT can degenerate and lead on to. Patients with complete heart block with a, a slow heart rate can uh, develop polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. One, two. Uh, second is that infraisian focus is not stable, sir. No, the infraisian ventricular focus is a unstable focus and it may stop functioning. And before another, another, another focus takes over, the patient can become unconscious. Okay, third. Third, sir, that stroke volume is not uh, good for cerebral perfusion. We are getting a low stroke volume. No, no, no. Stroke volume is very good. But the patient uh, is the... Cardiac output. Cardiac output cannot. Why? Why? The heart rate is less. Heart rate is yeah. Heart rate is fixed. You cannot increase heart rate. And because the cardiac output is stroke volume in the heart rate, so volume is very good, but the heart rate may be only 20 or 30. And during exercise, the patient will not be able to increase heart rate and then can result in loss of consciousness. Fourth one? Consciousness. Mm -hmm. Fourth mechanism. Any one of you? No, no, no. Fourth mechanism of Loss of consciousness in patients with complete heart block. So then there is a change between the sinus and the ventricle focus. The ventricle yes. focus is unstable. Oh. Then so it may not take when... Very good. In a patient who is struggling between normal sinus rhythm and complete heart block, uh, when the patient ch changes over from normal sinus rhythm to complete heart block, the lower focus may not take, take over. Especially if it is a ventricular focus, it may not take over because it's a poor focus. And it may not take over and the patient may become unconscious. So these are the four mechanisms by which patients in complete heart block can become unconscious and they can develop a, a seizure phenomenon. Okay, so the, uh, the problem of trifascicular block is that these patients are prone to develop complete heart block and they can go in for a Stokes Adams episode. This patient had a Stokes Adams episode and then we had to uh, give, put him, uh, we had to put a permanent pacemaker on him. Okay, right. Yes. Okay, what does this electrocardiogram show? What does this electrocardiogram show? Whenever you look at an electrocardiogram, you should look at what is the thing which strikes you best. And then you try to uh, go backwards and try to find out the differential diagnosis and tell what fits in best. 
So possibly hyperkalemia causing this arrest. Yeah. Yeah, possibility of hyperkalemia. What, what, what are the points by which you suspect hyperkalemia? The uh, tall tented P waves are seen in the V4-5. Okay. And sir, uh, the P waves are not visible. V4-5 is not visible. Very good. And also it is a regular rhythm. Which also has been described in hyperkalemia. So he has got three features of hyperkalemia here. One, the tall peak T waves, two, the dwarfing and disappearance of the P wave, and there is a, something known as a sinoatrial arrest. So the rhythm is quite irregular. And so the, that makes the diagnosis of uh, the possibility of uh, hyperkalemia as a strong possibility. What are the serial electrocardiography changes of hyperkalemia? Saroj? What are the serial electrocardiography changes of hyperkalemia? Yes, sir. Anyone of you? Sir, first there is a tall T wave, sir. Very good. Uh, then there is loss of P wave. Very good. And then there is a, uh, a the QRS complex broad. Very good. And the last one? The sine wave pattern. Sine wave pattern. Sine wave pattern yeah. is actually disappearance of the ST segment and the QRS merges with the T wave. T wave. That is one of the sine wave pattern. So these are the four stages of electrocardiographic abnormality in a patient with hyper hyperkalemia. So initially tall peak T waves, dwarfing of the P wave and disappearance of the P wave, then the widening of the QRS complex and disappearance of the ST segment and the QRS merges with the T wave. This is known as the sine wave pattern. Okay, right. Yes. Good. Can you tell me at uh, every stage what will be the serum potassium level? Any one of you? Any one of you? At the initial stage, when there is a dwarfing, it is a, 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 a tall peak T waves usually is around, around 6 to 6.5 milligrams. Next stage when the disappearance of the P wave, it will be around 6 to 6.5 to 7. Winding of the QRS complex, then uh, disappearance of the ST segment, then uh, sine wave pattern all indicate that the uh, serum potassium level has gone beyond 7.5 milligrams per liter. And these patients are prone to develop arrhythmias, especially dangerous ventricular arrhythmias and uh, uh, they can develop a sudden cardiac death. So patients with hyperkalemia, especially when they have got uh, uh, features like uh, dwarfing of the P wave, P wave disappearance and all, you should immediately treat and bring back the uh, potassium to normal level. What is the management of these patients? How do you manage? What is the first thing that you can do to prevent the risk of an arrhythmia? So first, we have to see if any any drug patient getting okay. that, that we have to stop, and uh, then, sir, uh, we will uh, see um, whether the uh, sir, there are the three things which we can do. One is sir, calcium gluconate, sir, sodium, yes. sodium bicarbonate, and sir, nebulization, and sir, uh, um, GI uh, drips. Very good, excellent. So many ways of bringing down the potassium. Uh, uh, in Emirate, you didn't mention about the, uh, the cation exchange resins. That also is important. Yes, cation exchange. Some noise is coming. Can you switch off your uh, screen? So, so can you switch it or switch off so that there is noise? Okay. One is the uh, there are many treatment modalities. Of course, one is the calcium. What what is the calcium that you give? What is the most preferred calcium? Calcium gluconate. No. That's what we usually give, but that is not the most preferred and the most effective. It's calcium chloride. If the calcium chloride is available, calcium chloride should be given. Okay. What are the other measures? Sir, hemodialysis is the most effective part of it. Uh, but hemodialysis is uh, uh, effective, but then sometimes uh, uh, patients may not immediately accept hemodialysis. But there are many other ways of intervening. One is, uh, and there is uh, you can uh, uh, cation exchange resins, ion exchange resins. Even enema can be given, and ion exchange resin enema can immediately bring down the potassium level. Okay, what else? 
insulin with 5% extra very good insulin with glucose not 5% hypertonic uh, uh, 25% glucose glucose yes. insulin infusion can bring down the potassium level what else then you said about uh, beta 2 stimulation uh, inhalation can bring down the potassium level soda also, bicarbonate soda bicarbonate can also be used and also you can uh, so there are multiple ways by which you can bring down the potassium and we should be immediately turned, especially in the patient who has got uh, uh, PFs or disappeared and they usually will have about 6.5 to 7 and these patients immediately require urgent treatment. Okay, yes. Sir, there are new drugs have come for potassium decreasing, sir. What sir, petriomer. It? Sir, petriomer. Oh, I do not know. How does it act? Sir, uh, like... Uh, Sir, this is also type of resin only. Oh. Uh, and sir, one more drug has come, sir, that uh, trade name is Localma. Sir, that is uh, uh, Gerol Calcium Cycloside Silicate, sir. Sir, now, sir, question is coming in our theory paper, sir. This one, sir, Petriomer. Oh, that, is, uh, that, that acts by through calcium. Uh, 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 sir, uh, mm, like sir, uh, sometimes we have to give in failure patients the uh, uh, spironolactone. Uh, then sir, uh, this drug sir, uh, it is uh, sir. I am also not knowing fully, but sir, uh, petriomer and sir, uh, localma. Sir, these are okay. the two I new drugs. I also tried. I also tried to read. I have not read about it, so I do not know. Uh, so we will find. I'll find out. Uh, how does that this act? Even the standard iron, uh, the cation uh, exchange resins, enema can be given, and that dramatically can bring down the uh, serum potassium level. Even oral uh, preparation of the cation exchange resin, the the exchange resins can also bring down the potassium level very significantly without any problem. And even may you, sometimes you can make use of intravenous lasics, frucimide, which can also uh, result in significant expression of potassium. So there are multiple ways now available by means of which we can bring down the potassium. And of course, as one of our students have said, if the patient is still the potassium is very high and there's a risk of developing arrhythmia and the potassium must be quickly brought down, I think dialysis is a, is a good option. It can immediately bring down the potassium level. Okay, what is this? What does this electrocardiogram show? Sir, electrical alternance. Yes, electrical alternance. So low voltage ECG, sir. With Very low voltage. Alternance. Low yeah. voltage ECG with the electrical alternance. What is your diagnosis? Pericardial tamponade. Cardiac tamponade. For cardiac tamponade, ideally you need uh, the total uh, electrical alternance. Total electrical alternance. But uh, in this patient, I actually had uh, had uh, uh, cardiac tamponade. So this massive pericardial diffusion, the old low voltage complexes, and uh, alternating. If it is total uh, electrical alternance, you are hundred percent safe. But even percent of like QRS electrical alternance along with the very low voltage complexes, I think you should suspect the possibility of cardiac tamper. Okay, very good. Yes. This patient is saying what? By Jaminas to them. Two beats are coming together. So what are the conditions in which you can get bigeminous sodium? There are about five conditions. What are the conditions in which you can get bigeminous sodium? Any one of you? Bigeminous sodium means two beats are coming together. No, that is not a very difficult question. Bigeminous sodium, what are the conditions? Sir, atrial bigemini, ventricular bigemini, sir, then sir, Mobis type 2, 3 is to 2. Eh? Uh, Mobis type 2 block, sir. No, uh, no, 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 not Mobis type 2 block, wrong.
Any one of you? Okay. Conditions are one, as you rightly said, alter, uh, a normal bit with the alternating with ectopic bit. It can be atrial or ventricular. So alternating ventricular ectopic bits. That is by German Sudha. That's the commonest and the most uh, widely detected by German Sudha. One, two. What are the mechanisms of my human system? You said about some Mobitz block. What is the one? Can you correct it? Anyone of you? Any Mobitz block which can give rise to my human system? Mobitz type 1 block with 3 is to 2 conduction. When Mobitz type 1 or winky back phenomenon, 3 is to 2 conduction. Okay, right. 3. three That condition where there can be bijamin sugar. Another is an atrial flutter with the four east one, two east one alternating conduction. Sometimes in patients with the atrial flutter, you can get four east one, two east one alternating conduction. That can also give rise to bijamin sugar. Okay, anything else? Just like AV. Wengi back phenomenon, atrial ventricular wengi back 3 is to 2. You can get a, a sinoatrial wengi back phenomenon, 3 is to 2. That can also give rise to bijamin sudam. So, these are the few conditions where you can get a bijamin sudam to recapitulate. Egnath, would you like to repeat? What uh, yes, sir. One more, one more is there. Uh, I forgot to mention uh, escape capture by Gemini. And another is echo by Gemini. Also, there are about six conditions where there can be by Gemini Sudam. Okay, repeat. Sir, uh, uh, actor of ventricular ectopics. Yes, alternating, are... alternating, uh, you know, uh, uh, atrial or ventricular ectopics with normal rhythm. Okay, right. Yes. Yes. Uh, then, uh, Mobis type 1, uh, which is two, 3 to 1 block. Okay. Then, uh, atrial flutter. Uh, oh. uh, atrial flutter. Uh, Two is to one or uh, five. Four is to one. Usually it is two is to one. Four, 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 four is to one. Alternating two is to one, four is to one conduction. Okay, yes. very good. Third, then, fourth. Uh, escape capture by Jimmy. Escape capture by Jimmy. Fifth. Sinatrial wing back. Sinatrial wing back, 3 to 2 sinatrial wing back. And finally, echo captured by Gemini. So, these are the conditions in which you can get by Gemini Sudam. So, here you are getting a by Gemini Sudam, and what is the reason? Escape capture, sir. Eh? Escape capture by Gemini. Very good. Escape capture by Gemini. Okay, very excellent. What is the basic lesion which leads to escape capture by Gemini? And what do you mean by that? Escape capture by Gemini. The first beat is an escape beat because. So, sinus node dysfunction is the cause. Yeah, you're very good. Because of sinus node dysfunction, there is a long pause resulting in escape beat. The AV node has escaped, and this is escape beat. But by that time, the atrial activity occurred, and that has resulted in a capture beat. So, this is a escape capture by Gemini. This is a good example of an escape capture by Gemini. Okay, right. We'll go to the next one. Escape that capture. is echo capture by Gemini. Echo capture by Gemini is that you, sometimes what may happen is that there can be a ventricular ectopic beat. And that way, at the appropriate time, the ventricular ectopic beat may go into the atrium and will generate the atrial complex and will come back. Okay. And then produce a ventricular ectopic beat and then again goes back. So the two beats can come together uh, the echo beat and the normal beat. And then, uh, then after that, there can be a gap, and they come again together. That is known as the echo is because of the uh, an ectopic beat which can, which started from the ventricle, went back to atrium, and came back to ventricle. That's an echo capture by. So there are about three seven conditions which can give rise to bijamin sudam. So you should remember it. Sometimes bijamin sudam can occur as a short note. 
So you should remember there are seven conditions I will repeat. One, alternating ectopic beat with normal beat. One, two, three is two, two, more beats type one, heavy block. Three, atrial flutter with four is one, two is one contraction. Five, sine wave will bring back. Six, escape capture by Gemini. And seven, uh, echo capture by Gemini. So these are the conditions which can lead to by Gemini Sudha. By Gemini Sudha means two bits are coming together. Okay, this is simple. You must have seen plenty of times. Hmm? No, no take it. Sir, accelerated idioventricular rhythm. Very good. Accelerated ventricular rhythm with in, in between uh, reverting sinus. to sinus. Okay, very good. Very good. What does it indicate? Sir, ongoing ischemia. No, no, uh, no, no, no. Recanalize re uh, vessels. I beg your pardon? Recanalize vessels. Reperfusion. Oh, yeah. Reperfusion arrhythmia. No, it is a reperfusion arrhythmia. Don't use the word recanalized. It is a reperfusion arrhythmia. When you open up a, uh, in a primary angioplasty, when you open up the vessel, you can dispatch it and go in for accelerated idioventricular rhythm. So following traumatic therapy, they can develop an accelerated idioventricular rhythm. So this is accelerated idioventricular rhythm. And in between the patients, having, this is a fusion beat, this is a normal sinus beat, this is a fusion beat. And then when into the broad QRS complex. So it's an accelerated idioventricular rhythm. Okay, what is this pressure tracing? There are two, three pressure tracings. One that of the ventricle, left ventricle, one that of the aorta, and the other is left atrium. Dynamic left LVOT obstruction. Yeah, it's dynamic LVOT obstruction. Why did you use the word dynamic? Why can't it be fixed? Sir, because sir, the pressure difference, hmm, so the aortic tracing is showing that uh, uh, so the um, uh, uh, the peak is not in the last part. So the, the gradient is increasing from the beginning only. Eh? So in the aortic tracing, oh. we can uh, see the... Why did uh, you say dynamic obstruction? That's my question. <laughs> so dynamic obstruction is uh, because sir, the... From the very beginning, so the, mm. we can see that uh, the gradient gradient is seen from the beginning, and it is not peaking in the last part of the um, system. If, the, if there is a gradient seen from the beginning, then how can you address a dynamic obstruction? So that um, the dome and spike pattern we can see here, sir. Uh, in between, sir, it is again dropping, sir. No, you have to describe the hemodynamics. Anybody who would like to describe the hemodynamics from the pressure tracing? What is happening to the LV and aortic pressure to start with? This is the aortic pressure, this is the LV pressure. Both are rising simultaneously, sir. Simultaneously, indicating that there is no gradient. Gradient, no obstruction here. Initial part, there is no obstruction, no gradient, and then the gradient happens. Happen. So that is why there is a dynamic obstruction. Dynamic obstruction has happened here. Initially, there is no obstruction, and there is a dynamic obstruction that has resulted in the gradient. So in a patient with a fixed obstruction, the gradient will be from the beginning of the aortic crossover. When the pressure, when the LV pressure has crossed over the aortic pressure, there will be gradient from the beginning in fixed obstruction. While in dynamic obstruction, the, the gradient will appear only after the initial 
face when there is no obstruction at all. So here it is a dynamic obstruction. Initially, the pressure wave of the the pressure rise of the aorta and the left ventricle are occurring together, and then there is an obstruction which are resulted in a gradient. So this is a dynamic obstruction. What is this? So broken bone phenomenon. Eh? Why did you say what is a no. broken bone phenomenon? No. Describe it. Sir, uh, I, I, is it diagonal? Uh, yes, it's aortic stenosis, sir. Oh yeah, it's a fixed obstruction. It's a why, fixed did you, why, why did you say first initially uh, broken bone phenomenon? Mm -hmm. so you describe that first, then you describe why it is not. What is broken bone brown world more of phenomenon? Uh, it's it, 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 actually, uh, it's not a, it's a, a fixed obstruction, so it's not dynamic obstruction because the, mm -hmm. the gradient is the uh, same, sir. Actually, it's a gradient, the gradient after the, from the beginning. See, uh, as soon as the pressures are crossed over, there is a gradient is set up. So, there is a yes, gradient uh, between the aorta and the permanent uh, from the left ventricle from the beginning of the crossover of the, of the pressure. Unlike in the previous patient. Here, initially, there is no pressure gradient. Yes. The pressure gradient occurred only after, after a, a period of ejection. So there is a dynamic obstruction in this patient. While here, from the beginning itself, there is a gradient. So that's a fixed yes, obstruction. Yes. Here. Then, uh, uh, is it a broken neuro phenomenon or is it, a, is it not? It's not a broken one. Yeah, then describe it. What is a really uh, bro broken neuro, brown world neuro phenomenon? What is it? Uh, uh, sorry, uh, 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 broken bow phenomenon, sir, actually, uh, after the, uh, the ectopic, after ectopic uh, uh, is not able to uh, 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 effect to, uh, to cause the uh, effective LV contraction that increase the uh, LV in diastolic volume. And uh, uh, next syst uh, during the next systole, there is a uh, uh, if uh, uh, yeah, there is uh, increase in uh, end diastole column, there is a sudden effective contraction of the LV that lead to the sudden rise in gradient. So. Uh, uh, more importantly, it is not the rise in gradient that that we appreciate. We appreciate a drop in the diastolic pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 pressure in the whole pulse volume actually drops. In the post ectopic, we normally post ectopic beat is a uh, beat with a higher pulse volume, a higher pulse pressure. So, in a patient with uh, uh, broken or brown or phenomenon, the, the, pulse, the uh, uh, pulse pressure drops and systolic pressure also drops. It is mostly because of the drop in systolic pressure. Why does the systolic pressure drop? That is because that is because of the increase in the gradient. There is increase in the gradient. In a post ectopic beat, what are the hemodynamic changes? What are the hemodynamic changes in a post ectopic beat? Uh, sir, in post ectopic beats. Uh... Normally, in a person, when there is a ectopic beat and followed by there is a post ectopic beat, what are the pressure changes of a post ectopic beat? What will be what will happen to diastolic pressure? Sir, actually, uh, uh, as a post ectopic beat is a weak, sir. So, in diastolic pressure, uh, weak beat, weak, weak beat. So, not why, why did you say peak, uh, post ectopic beat is a weak beat? It is a strong beat actually. I am yes, asking. Ectopic beat is a weak, sir. Post ectopic beat is strong beat. Oh, it's a strong beat. Why it is becomes a why it is a strong beat? 
Yes, there is a longer diastolic phase, so end diastolic volume increases one, two. So force of contraction will be more. Yeah, there will be uh, the force of contraction will be more three. So, so in post ectopic beat, uh, stroke uh, volume will be high, uh, sir. Why? Sir, because, sir, lucidropic uh, lucid, uh, yeah. lucid, effects. No, lucidropic uh, effects may not give rise to increased force of contraction. Lucidropic effect is a, is a relaxing Relaxation. Sir, sir. sir, because endostatic volume is high, sir, so force of contraction will be high. Yeah, force of contraction, you already mentioned that. Uh, Can there be increase in the contractility? As the end of column is uh, high, sir, so that leads to the, uh, according to starting law, there is increased contractility. Uh, uh, yes, sir, calcium. Yes, sir, calcium. Yes, because really in a, the, the, the calcium utilization in ectopic bit is? Low, less. Really low. So the post ectopic bit will have more calcium more as well as more uh, um, uh, energy. And because of that, the force of contraction will be? More. Much more. Yes. Okay. Right. Yes. What will happen to diastolic pressure? What will happen to peripheral resistance? Peripheral resistance? The diastole, the diastole pressure comes down, peripheral resistance comes down, so the heart will be able to pump the afterload comes down, and the heart will be able to pump the blood with great ease. So uh, a post-ectopic beat is a more powerful beat with a higher pulse volume and higher pulse pressure. The increase in the systolic pressure may not be very striking. That will be marginal, but uh, the, the diastole pressure will be lower, the pulse pressure will be higher, and the force of contraction will be much more. So what is the effect of these changes on the LV outflow obstruction in a patient with the, with the uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy? So that is the one which uh, 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 broken the row, brown wall, moro uh, sign says. What it happens? Increase, to Sir, gradient will increase, sir. Sir, obstruction will increase, sir. Obstruction will increase and uh, the, the systolic pressure of the post-ectopic bit will be? Lower, sir. Lower, yes. So, uh, see, in a post-ectopic bit, the hemodynamic changes are, one, increase in the end diastolic volume. This will increase in the increase in the force of contraction. But what is the effect of increase in the end diastolic volume on LV outflow obstruction in a dynamic obstruction case? LV and diastolic volume increase will result in increase or decrease in LV outflow obstruction. It will increase LV hmm. outflow tract obstruction. Okay. Anybody else who would like to give another opinion? Actually, when there is an increase in end diastolic volume, that will decrease the LV outflow obstruction. So, in a patient with uh, uh, when there is increase in the venous return, End diastolic volume increases, LV outflow obstruction decreases. Two, there is a more calcium available, contractility increases, force of contraction increases. That will result in what? Increase in obstruction or decrease in obstruction? So, contraction uh, increases uh, obstruction. Yes, contractility increases obstruction. And third is there is a decrease in the peripheral resistance, uh, diastolic pressure comes down. And when there is a peripheral resistance comes down and ECE, the patient can easily pump the blood out, what will happen to obstruction? Again, increase, sir. Obstruction increase. will increase. So of the, of the, there are two points which will increase and one point will decrease. Sir. End diastolic volume increase, so obstruction will decrease. Whereas, yes. sir, force of contraction is increasing and peripheral resistance is decreasing. So, sir, uh, uh, ultimately, sir, there will be... Uh, more obstruction, it more increase obstruction, and there is a drop in this stolic pressure. Very good. Okay. So here, this is a fixed obstruction. You can see that the uh, the post ectopic bead has got higher pressure, pressure, 
And if you look at the pressure pattern from the beginning itself, it there is a gradient. So there are multiple features to tell you that the patients have got a fixed obstruction. Okay, right, yes. What does this pressure tracing tell you? Oh, you didn't mention about uh, uh, there's a uh, there's a leptator pressure. Oh, okay, in this one we didn't discuss about the leptator pressure. So what does this mean? There's some degree of. What does this? Uh, 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 this is a V wave. What does this V wave indicate? There may be some degree of mitral There's some degree of mitral regurgitation because the LA pressure is significantly elevated. And so patients have some degree of mitral regurgitation. And mitral regurgitation can occur in patients with uh, uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Okay, what does this mean? Pressure tracing. So mitral regurgitation. Oh, that is not enough. So, uh, uh, The diastolic pressure of LV and LA almost same. So most probably yeah, we have done sir uh, some procedure after that, and sir V wave is very prominent. Okay, we should have mentioned that it is uh, due to acute mitral, mitral regurgitation. You didn't. You just said mitral regurgitation. That's not enough because the LA pressure is almost uh, reaching the LV systolic pressure. So that is highly suggestive of acute yeah, mitral regurgitation. Right, okay. Quickly, can you comment about the diagnosis? What are the important findings in the pressure data and any, any finding in the oximetry data? Gaurav, are you there? Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, why can't you interpret? Uh, 28 year. Yes, sir. Ah. Yes, sir. 28 year. Uh, um, Male patient. But... Oh, you are, your sound is broken. Now it is okay. Hello? Not yet, okay. Uh, now it's better. Now it's better. Okay, yes. Uh, so, coming on to the pressure of RA, A wave is a mean of lines uh, slightly, on the, uh, uh, slightly on the higher side. Sir, because okay, not very good. On 5 to 7. Okay. Slightly increase. Okay, very good. Yes. No, you are, there's something wrong with you. No, 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 Gaurav, I can't uh, clearly hear you. I think it is broken. Agnath, would you like to try? Uh, 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 body is normal. Agnath, would you like to try? Uh. In this pressure tracing, in this tracing, in this hemodynamic data. Eganath, if you are there, you try. Yes, or... sir. Yes, sir. Uh, try. Uh, sir, uh, uh, first oximetry data we'll uh, see, sir. Okay. In Averta, uh, in Averta sir, uh, the saturation is 98%. So there is the no cyanosis, sir. Okay. Uh, then, uh, uh, yes, we should. Uh, then, uh, is there any abnormality in the oximetry data? Uh, sir, uh, yes, we see it. To... Uh, IVC is okay. RA no no step down. Uh, RV not uh, pulmonary artery. Uh, sir, pulmonary artery to uh, uh, LA sir uh, sudden. Hmm? Pulmonary artery to pulmonary artery where it will be. Uh, 
step up is there no no that is not a step up that is a normal phenomenon uh, okay so that is normal because uh, the the uh, the that's venous blood that gets oxygenated yes. and becomes hundred percent so there is no abnormality in the uh, oxygen actually sir okay. it's aortic pressure aortic saturation ninety eight percent it's not a cyanotic sir yeah this is everything is normal okay go come to pressure data uh, uh then sir uh, uh, uh mean RA pressure is nine so a little bit higher side sir okay we uh, also is prominent we is twelve. So, yes, we were at twelve, sir. There may be a patient, maybe a tricuspidal agitation. Okay, right. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then uh, RV pressure is uh, fifty by uh, eight, sir. It's a high, high pit. Mildly elevated. Okay. Mildly, mildly elevated. Okay. Then a uh, PA pressure. Is there any gradient? Is there a gradient across the pulmonary valve? Uh, no sir. So there is a sir, pulmonary arterial hypertension is present. So mean yes, is yes. showing forty. Yeah, there sir, is some degree. Uh, forty, sir, 40, 40 can be borderline moderate. So yes, sir, moderate. High or uh, low moderate or high high mild. Okay, right. Yes. yes sir. And sir, over the sir left atria, sir we can see sir uh, both A and B both are uh, sir more sir. So there is a gradient between L A and L V. Sir, so uh, why did you uh, say that? So, no, sir. Oh, twenty twenty. Sorry, sir. Sir, it is twenty twenty. Sir, V V is more prominent. Sir, it is yes. uh, thirty four. Sir. Yes. Sir, so, sir, so sir, there is mitral regurgitation. Okay, there very is, good. Sir, there is tricuspid regurgitation with moderate pH. Sir. Okay. What is it? And sir, okay. and, sir uh, uh, let's see. what is aortic pressure? Uh, sir, one fifty by fifty, sir. AR may be there, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. That's a full AR diagram. Yes, sir. So since the uh, the patient has developed a, a, a significantly elevated pulmonary artery wedge pressure, you may suspect that patient might have developed an acute MR or may may be having an acute AR, which has resulted in a significant elevation of the pulmonary artery wedge pressure. So TR, MR, and AR, and maybe that MR may be uh, acute or chronic. Which are resulted in a significant elevation of the pulmonary artery wedge pressure, and uh, air is air is there because there is a high pulse pressure, one fifty bar fifty. So there is high pulse pressure. Okay, very good. Next one. Somebody else should interpret now. Very uh, sir, uh, sir, has just become very confident now. I think you have improved significantly. Very good. I think oh, I I have been observing your improvement over a period of time. Excellent improvement and excellent confidence. Now okay. I think I think you should leave for somebody else to interpret and discuss. Anybody who would like to discuss? I think people should discuss. Then only you will be able to gain confidence to interpret the data. Sandosh, would you like to try? Sandosh, where are you from? In which institution? Institute का नाम पूछ रहे हैं। Which institute are you from, Sandosh? I am from Jubilee Mission Medical College, sir. Be sure. Jubilee sir, Mission. Sir. Okay. So, yes, uh, you why can't you interpret this? Are you a final year student? Uh, no, sir. Second year, sir. Second year. Second year. Uh, I think final year should try. He might not get that. Probably finally, finally, sir, better. Or Santosh, would you like to try? Uh, uh, can you interpret this uh, hemodynamic data? Sir, yeah. No, sir, not confident. Okay, okay. So then you listen later because you have got one more year to go. Those who are finally, you must try. Yes, yes. Kavro is uh, finally, you can try. Uh, have you tried your uh, audio? And now clear. Now, 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 now it's clear. Okay, now it's clear. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay, sir. Okay. It is gone again. Is no, 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 it's not clear. Dear female child. No. Actually, in hostel, sir, I came to hostel, so it is not clear here. 
so so somebody who has got a good uh, good um, uh, um, uh, system must uh, try to answer otherwise uh, uh, saroj is having a very clear system so we can ask her now saroj you try yes sir uh, sir uh, this is a uh, eight year old female um, sir uh, here sir uh, oximetry data uh, seems sir uh, normal sir huh? uh, oximetry data oximetry data sir that's not normal level 755 If it is uh, uh, three, uh, my three average taken, sir. So seven at the level of atria, five ventricle, and five at the great artery. Oh, what, what, what do you mean by that? Is it a single sample or multiple sample? No, sir. Multiple sample. I am telling, sir. Okay, okay. If it is single, single, single sample. Single, sir. Uh, sir, eleven, ten, uh, eleven. Uh, last is five only, sir. So at the great artery, it is five only. No, no. But what is the when at when the killer level? Ventricle. Multiple. Multiple sample. Anybody? Seven. Five, sir. Eight. No, sir. Eight. Seven, sir. Eight. Eight. In in P a pulmonary artery, both uh, single and multiple sample five. In the LV, multiple samples five, or single sample seven. In the uh, atrium, multiple sample seven. So a single a single sample some people say 10 some people say 11 10 to 11 okay right yes okay here so there is a significant significant step up so there is a step up at the pulmonary artery level okay right yes go ahead so now sir now come to the sir, uh, pressure data sir okay. ra uh, uh, sir 6 and 5 sir normal okay rb uh, 45 by 6 uh, between the uh, There is no tricuspid valve uh, gradient, sir. Okay, very good. So then come to sir uh, RV to MPA, sir. It is for forty-five, forty-five. Okay, sir. Okay. Mm. So there is a uh, sir uh, mean is thirty. There is in RPA, sir. It is uh, mean coming eighteen. Oh. And LPA is showing sir thirty. Sir, hmm. so there is a uh, sir gradient between the MPA to RPA. Very good. Uh, okay, yes, there is a gradient between MPA to RPA. Very good. Uh, yes. But sir, not not in the LPA, sir. Okay. Okay. Now, sir, uh, pulmonary wedge. Sir, wedge is uh, normal, sir. Okay. Seven. LV one twenty by eight and aorta is one twenty by forty. Sir, okay. there is a sir uh, high sir pulse pressure is seventy, sir. High. Okay. Okay. So, so, yeah. so there is a left pulmonary artery. Uh, uh, answer, uh, sir. I have to think about whether uh, PDA and pulmonary stenosis, sir. Okay. Stenosis. Okay. Yes. Yes. But uh, when this combination. The AP goes, window, sir. So can it be AP window? It can, but this, uh, AP no. window usually. AP uh, window. Sick. I was. Uh, uh, I would go for PDA, but uh, of course uh, you cannot rule out small small AP window. It's quite possible. It can be a small AP window also. But when there is a PDA with a peripheral pulmonary artery stenosis, what is this combination? Yes, sir. Uh, 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 sir, that syndrome, sir. What syndrome? Um, Anyone? Down. Billion. Down. Billion. Down is associated with what lesion? Turner syndrome. Eh? Turner. 
Hello, Jim. What, what is this combination? Association in Downs has been. Downs has been. Down is associated with what is the common solution for Down syndrome? Endocardial question. Yeah, endocardial question. Endocardial question. Every every question. Is this Ehlers-Danlos syndrome? No, no, no. It's rubella syndrome. Rubella. Okay. It is a rubella that you get a combination of peripheral pulmonary artery stenosis. Congenital rubella. PDA. Congenital rubella syndrome. Okay, right. Good. I think uh, interpretation everything was good, but ultimately they could not tell what is this combination. That's all. Not don't worry. Uh, did you close this uh, PDA or? It was PDA, PDA with uh, peripheral pulmonary artery stenosis, and uh, the, the child had. So uh, did you close this PDA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was closed. So it was uh, interventionally closed. Okay. okay. Ah. What is this? Anybody? Sir, TAVI, TAVI procedure going on, sir. Sir, TAVI procedure going on. No, no, no. TAVI procedure going on, sir. TAVI. No, 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 no. Actually, I thought this is uh, TAVI because uh, there is a pacemaker and. Anybody? The RSO be closer. The RSO be closer. No, 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 no. See, where, where, where is the shunt? From where to the where? VST closer. VST closer. The shunt is from LV to RV. You can say that there is a shunt is from LV to RV, and that is closed by a device closer. So it's a VST closer. What is this? This should be a symbol for you. Diagnosis. Alcapo. Very good, Alcapo. Because uh, right coronary artery injection resulted in filling of the yes, lady and which is uh, uh, lady and the circumflex and it is, it is draining into the pulmonary artery. You can see that it is draining into pulmonary artery. It is yes. here. Yes. It is in the pulmonary yes. artery. So it is a Alcapo. Anomalous origin of the left pulmonary artery from the pulmonary artery. Pulmonary. Management? Pulmonary. Management. What is the management? What should you do? Any comments? Agnath, would you like to give a comment? Saroj, would you like to give a comment? What should you do? So there is an uh, no. So you first you have to uh, uh, remove the, uh, the left. Coronary artery from the segment. And if it can be mobilized and can be anastomosed to the aorta, that is the best thing to do. If that is not possible, you should give a bypass from the aorta to the right left pulmonary artery or left uh, coronary artery. And even up to the LA to the LAD, oh. where the surgery can easily graft. So ideally, it should be implanted into the aorta. If that is not possible, then you can put in a graft from the aorta to the left hand descending artery. Okay, right. Yes. So this is alcapa. Very good diagnosis. Correct diagnosis. 
What is this? What is the procedure that has been done? Beautician. Is it a pencil shunt? No, beautician. Is this a virus? Glen. Say. Glen shunt. Hmm. What did you say? SVC. Yeah, it is SVC to the. SVC to pulmonary artery. Yes. Glen. Glen procedure. It's a Glen procedure. So what has been done is a Glen procedure. Nowadays, usually people do bidirectional Glen. What do you mean by bidirectional Glen? What is bidirectional plan? Uh, sir, uh, uh, from superior vena cava, there is a shunt between superior vena cava to the uh, main pulmonary artery, okay. rather than uh, rather than to, to separate uh, pulmonary uh, or uh, single uh, to uh, right pulmonary artery or the left pulmonary artery. Okay. Then what is meant by bidirectional plan? Sir, actually, in bidirectional plane, SVC is connected just uh, near to M it to the RPA, but very near, so that okay. sir, blood will flow from uh, 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 from SVC to MPA to sir both the uh, pulmonary MPA arteries. Cut. MPA okay. is cut. Hmm. What will you do with the IVC? Uh, sir, uh, for uh, complete fontet IVC. Ah, what will you do to IVC? Sir, IVC, uh, sir, for complete completion of fontet. Ah, no, then, no, sir, in bidirectional gland also you uh, anastomos IVC. Anyhow, you read about it. Next class, we will have a short discussion about uh, fontaine and IVC and also bidirectional gland. Okay, we'll go to the next one. Oh, can anyone of you tell me? I think we have to stop at this level. But uh, we'll uh, end with this question. What do you mean by afterload mismatch? What is afterload? What is afterload? So it is a resistance against which LV has to pump the blood, sir. Very good. Afterload is the uh, resistance against which LV pumps the blood. Okay, right. It consists of the uh, obstruction at the RV, uh, the aortic valve, or peripheral resistance, or vascular uh, uh, Im uh, impedance, all those things. Okay, right. Yes. So then what is meant by afterload mismatch? Increased peripheral vascular resistance lead on to LV. Yeah, very good. You are correct. Uh, the, actually, afterward mismatch is the inability of the ventricle functioning at a stable level of iotropic state to maintain normal stroke volume against the altered afterload. I will repeat. Afterload mismatch is the inability of the ventricle functioning at a stable level of inotropic state to maintain normal stroke volume against the altered afterload. Best example is Acute systolic loading of the ventricle in acute hypertension can lead to LV pump failure without myocardial dysfunction. A patient who is pumping normally, yes. suddenly the pressure rises. The myocardium has not lost its contractility, but suddenly it is not able to meet the demand of the afterload. And that is known as the afterload mismatch. And afterload mismatch occurs when preload reserve is unable to compensate. And the most important point is that if you can recognize why the patient developed an afterload mismatch, treatment of the mismatch is enough to bring the patient back to normalcy. So, in a patient with acute systolic pressure rise or uh, the pressure rise, uh, sudden uh, rise in pressure, the patient develops acute LVF. You bring down the pressure and the patient improves. So, the, there was an afterload mismatch and you make the afterload normal and the patient immediately improves. So, afterload mismatch is... Uh, the inability of the ventricle functioning at a stable level of inotropic state to maintain normal stroke volume against the altered afterload. So the afterload is altered, and here a systemic hypertension has suddenly altered the afterload. The patient develops acute LVF. So sometimes there can be a question on 
afternoon mismatch. There can be afternoon mismatch in aortic stenosis and afternoon mismatch in prosthetic wear. In aortic position, when there's a prosthetic wear, there can be afternoon mismatch. So there are many situations where there can be afternoon mismatch, but the afternoon mismatch is the inability of the ventricle functioning at a stable level of inotropic state to maintain normal stroke volume against the altered optimal. Okay, I think nine o'clock, I think we should stop at this level. There are a few more, some, some, yeah, we can show next class that I, uh, before we do go for the discussion next class. I will show you, show you some more spotters. Okay, uh, we'll stop at this level. What shall, we, what, what shall we do next class? Can one of you bring a case? Or should I get a, get a case? Okay, I think I, uh, next week I will bring a case. I think we, we need some volunteers to discuss the case so that uh, it can be made very lively. So to, uh, next week will be a case discussion. I will bring a case. Okay. Okay, right. Okay, thank you. Good night. Okay, good night, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Arti. Arti there? Uh, yes, sir, I'm here. Okay, we are finishing. You can stop recording. Okay, sir. Okay. So, can I end the meeting with your permission, sir? Okay, so I'm ending this meeting now. Thank you.